This is called a Langton loop. It's a special kind of cellular automaton, and it can make copies of itself. In this video, we'll talk about what a cellular automaton is and how the Langton loop works. To understand what a cellular automaton is, let's look at one of the earliest and simplest ones. Imagine your world is a grid of cells, like this. Each cell has a state, alive or dead. Now that one is alive. Now that one is alive. What if we had some rules to decide when a cell turns on or off? To figure out what a cell should do, we look at the cells surrounding it its neighbors. John Conway came up with a simple set of rules he called the game of life. To figure out what a cell will do next, you just count how many live neighbors it has. Every cell has eight neighbors. This cell in the middle has five live neighbors. This cell has only one live neighbor. Dead cells have eight neighbors too. This cell has two live neighbors. So what are those rules? They're based on how many live neighbors a cell has. That decides what it will do next. Rule one, if a cell is live and it only has one or no live neighbors, then it dies due to loneliness. Rule two, if a cell is live and it has four or more live neighbors, then it dies due to overcrowding. Rule three follows from the first two rules. If a cell is live and it has two or three live neighbors, then that's just right, and it stays alive. What about dead cells? Can they do anything? Yeah, rule four says that if a cell is dead and it has exactly three live neighbors, then it is born into life, as if by reproduction. Where this gets interesting is that we don't just apply the rule to one cell. We apply it to its neighbors as well, and their neighbors. We apply it to every cell in the grid to see what the next generation will look like. Then we apply it to every cell again to see what the next generation looks like. Sometimes things get really chaotic, and sometimes we find repeating patterns. The beauty of this cellular automaton is that with just a few simple rules, complex patterns emerge. What do you think happens to this structure? The middle cell is happy. It has two live neighbors, so it stays alive. But the top and bottom one each only have one live neighbor, the middle cell, so they die. But Look at the dead cells on the left and right. They each have three live neighbors, so they light up in the next generation. And if you repeat that process, we go back where we started. This is called an oscillator. Can you figure out what this one does? It's called a glider. People have been finding more and more figures that do interesting things. But Conway's Game of Life isn't the only game in town. Other cellular automata have different rules, and more than just two states. In this cellular automaton, each cell has eight states. Different state, different color. Researchers have been studying cellular automata that allow figures to make copies of themselves. Over the decades, they have been trying to simplify how many states and how many rules you need to create self-replicating figures. In 1984, Christopher Langton said, I only need eight states and 219 rules. And then this figure will self-replicate. But let's back up. 
We showed the eight states already, but what would those 219 rules even look like? Like in the game of life, we figure out each cell's new state by looking at its neighbors. But we make a couple of tweaks. First, we ignore diagonal neighbors. That means, in this world, each cell only has four neighbors instead of eight. The second tweak is about how we describe each rule. We can write a rule as a six-digit number. The first digit tells you the starting state of a cell. In this case, one means blue. The next four digits tell you the states of the neighbors in clockwise order. Red, yellow, red, magenta. The final digit is the actual rule. It tells you what the new state of that center cell must be. Magenta. So you think of the first five digits as a big if. If you see a blue cell surrounded in clockwise order by red, yellow, red, magenta neighbors, then that blue cell becomes magenta. And of course, each of those neighbors will have some rule that applies to them and changes them. With these rules in place, all we need is an interesting starting figure, like this. For each cell, we find the rule that matches its situation to figure out how it changes. We do it one at a time until we find the new state for every cell. Then do it all over again. And again. And keep on going. Something interesting starts to happen. It's like a red tube with colored cells moving inside. Those colored cells act like DNA. They invoke just the right rules so that they spin around, expand the tube, and eventually make copies of the entire figure. And those copies make copies, and those copies make copies forever. But we don't have that kind of time. What if we run this on a finite grid and connect the opposite sides? Kind of like that portal in Pac-Man. And do the same with the top and bottom sides. This means that when we look at the neighbors of a cell, if we're about to go over the edge, we wrap around to the opposite side. So the neighbors of this cell would be these. And the neighbors of this cell would be these. What would happen to the Langton loops if they replicated in a world like this? Notice as it gets big enough, the loops trapped inside stop replicating, and the loops on the outside keep on going. But since we're connecting opposite edges, this can't go on forever. <laughs> 